Now we've got our relationship created. We've got the two data sets, customer info and order info, but they're now related through that common value or common field of customer ID. Now that we've got the data model with all the data and the relationship, we're now gonna create the pivot table based off those two sets of data. So I'm gonna go back to my customer info tab. I'm now gonna go back up to my home tab, still inside a power pivot here. And about halfway down, we got an option for pivot table. If I hit the lower half of that button, you've got several options for you to pull from. I'm gonna grab pivot table. So this is gonna bring us back into the standard Excel interface. We've got back to all of our tabs there. There's my customer info, my order info, and all the other tabs that we've been working with. We're gonna create a new pivot table and I'm gonna put it on a new blank worksheet. So I'll hit okay. All right, so from here, it's really gonna feel familiar. We just got done talking about pivot tables, right? Drag and drop process. But take a look at your field list right here. We've got customer info, We've got order info, and I've got two other tables inside there. Okay, for me personally, you might have more, you might have less. Any lists inside of this active workbook that has been formatted as a table, so you go to home, format as table, it will now show up inside your field list, okay? which can get a bit confusing. Well, those aren't what I want. That's not what I'm working with, right? I only want a customer info and order info. Why am I seeing everything else? This is just the default behavior. And any list in the workbook that's been formatted as a table shows up here and it becomes available, potentially becomes available to the data model as well. Now, I'm gonna ignore those for right now. So whatever you got there, table two, three, 10, 100, whatever you got, okay? ignore them for now. We wanna focus on customer info and order info. So I'm gonna go into my customer info Got all those column headers, all those fields. I'm gonna grab country. Let's just resize this a little bit. And you know what, I'm gonna get my, my head out of the way here. There we go. So inside of there, I'm gonna expand out my customer info and I'm gonna grab country and I'm gonna drop that down into the row section. So now I've got all the unique countries coming from the customer info tab. Now, Let's collapse that up. I'm gonna go into order info. Remember, customer info is related to the order info. I'm gonna grab the order ID and I'm gonna drop that down into the value section. Let's just see what we get here. Ooh, I don't know, man, what do you think? So here, we've got a sum of the order ID, right? I don't think I really wanna sum that. Remember those defaults? Excel looked at that and says, oh, that's a numeric value. I can sum that. Well, that's great, right? But I don't want to sum the order ID. That makes zero sense. So instead of a sum, maybe I just want to count them. I just want to know how many orders we've had inside of each of these countries. So I can go to my little drop down, go back to value field settings. Inside of our value field settings window, I'm going to change it from a sum to a count. So now, Remember, two different data sets. Two different data sets here. I can now look at this and say, hey, for Argentina, we had 16 orders. Argentina came from the customer info worksheet, but on the orders, I need to get a count of them, that came from the order info. And because we created that relationship through the customer ID. Very cool. So that right there, I think is worth its price. Right? If you don't have the current version or the proper version that contains Power Pivot, this is huge. A very cool feature. Right? Be able to create those relationships, be able to connect the data, and to be able to create reports like this based off of two data sets. That's a very cool feature. Now, there's all sorts of other little goodies that we can do here. Uh, maybe it's not just a count. Let me get my head out of there again. Maybe it's not just a count, but I want to go to my order info, and I want to grab the freight and I'm gonna drop that into the value section. So now I've got, for Argentina, we had 16 orders and a total freight of $598.58. Well, well, that's great information, but maybe I don't wanna sum, maybe I wanna get an average, right? So I'll change that to an average, and now I've got an average freight for that orders, for that count of orders for the various countries.
This is so cool. So cool. All right. Uh, you know what? Let's, let's take it a step further. I'm going to get rid of the average freight. And maybe I want to take the ship via, which is how they shipped the products. And I'll drop that into the column section. So now I can see for Argentina, we had a total of 16 orders. Five of them were shipped with option one, seven with two, and four with number three. What, what do you think? Two different data sets connected, related to one another, all through Power Pivot, and we can now create pivot tables. Try this out. Get in there, make sure you got the relationship, create the pivot table, and then try messing around with it. Drop your fields into the fields, uh, into the, in, from your field list into the various locations of your pivot table. See what you get. Modify the calculations. Right, Experiment a little bit here and see what you can get from these two data sets that are related through Power Pivot.